Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. Welcome into the Sunday Journal. I'm your host, Matt Pitta. Thanks for being with us today on this edition of our program. We get together each week to talk about issues that are facing Cape Cod, the islands, and all of southeastern Massachusetts. Welcome into the show today. We're glad to have you with us. A very interesting topic here to talk about over the next several minutes. Coming up here on Cape Cod, we are hosting, the region is, the 6th Annual International Oyster Symposium. It runs from October 21st through the 23rd. It's taking place at the Seacrest Resort in Falmouth, being organized by the World Oyster Society. And uh, it's a very important symposium and event coming up. We're going to dig deep into that today to find out a little bit more about the importance of this event and uh, specifically why we're focusing in on the oyster, which many of us enjoy quite a bit here on Cape Cod, but it has so many other important aspects uh, to our life here on the Cape and around the world. And we've brought in the, pro- uh, the uh, program architect for this upcoming event, the 6th Annual International Oyster Symposium, and the North and South American Chapter Director for the World Oyster Society, Karen Dowsett. Uh, Karen, it's a pleasure to have you here in person. Thanks so much for being here today. Oh, well, thanks for inviting me. So uh, we've, uh, we, you and I have spoken a couple of times, and uh, I'm excited here to talk with you at length about what's going to be coming up on the 21st through the 23rd over at the Seacrest for the 6th Annual International Oyster Symposium. Let's start there. Give us just a, a sketch of what this event is about, and then we're going to talk about the importance of it, et cetera. So let's start there. What's this all about? Yeah, sure. Let me just clarify something. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the symposium is three days, and the first day is going to be held down in Woods Hole at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Lilly Auditorium, and then it moves to the Seacrest Beach Hotel for Thursday and Friday. So I just wanted to, you know, clarify that for the listeners. Absolutely. So give us an overview of a little bit about the event. Yeah. What's it all about? Well, the International Oyster Symposium is designed to bring the oyster people of the world across science, industry, and culture for the betterment of humanity and to really focus on the oyster and to re- raise our level of awareness about its key an indispensable role in marine health and coastal protection. Now, as folks may be hearing this and say, well, okay, I enjoy oysters. I understand that <laughs> we have a, a tremendous number of oyster beds and aquaculture here on Cape Cod. But beyond the fact that, you know, it's a part of our culinary economy here, uh, what is it that's so important about the oyster itself? Well, the oyster is, we think of it as a keystone species. And, and by that, we, we call it a keystone because when we think of the arch, there is that one stone without which the, the, the arch no longer stands. And so we have species that fill that important role, and the oyster is one of them. And it's been around for 350 million years. So it has tremendous adaptive ability. And in fact, civilizations have grown up around um, where the oysters flourished. And so we really have to look to them as a way to solve some of our environmental uh, issues as we are looking at them to, in today's times. So people may not be that familiar. That uh, Again, as I said, beyond the fact they might go and grab some oysters for dinner tonight or for lunch, but this, this oyster, this species, is actually very critical in terms of the overall uh, biodiversity, in terms of things like we're talking, we're going to talk about here about how it's being used uh, for nitrogen uh, issues here on mm-hmm. Cape Cod. So right. it, it really is a, an important uh, part of the whole chain. Yes, very much so. And you mentioned um, you mentioned nitrogen, and of course that's a, a, an issue that we're facing all over the Cape just because of our human uh, footprint. <laughs> um, but happily and quite naturally, uh, the oyster feeds on nitrogen. So it's uh, we can think of it as uh, a broom of the sea. We can think of it as uh, nature's Brita. And so um, it's a very, very wonderful thing that we have oysters in the water water and oyster aquaculture. Now, bringing this event here to Cape Cod, I understand, was significant, not just that it was even coming to the Cape, but that it was actually here in the U.S. and in North America, right? So tell me a little bit about that, that this is a, a big deal, that it's actually here, the actual event, the symposium. Well, yes, it's the first time in North America, and this is uh, a symposium. It's the sixth, and it happens biennially. Uh, so various countries have hosted it around the world, and so this is the first time for North America and specifically USA and even more specifically, um, our region, Cape Cod, um, to have the opportunity to 
um, host it. Let me take a step back. You live here on the Cape, um, as you mentioned to me before. Tell me about yourself. How did you get so deeply involved uh, with the World Oyster Society? Uh, what is it that drives you? <laughs> What's your interest? That's a really kind of interesting question, and most people just are a little confused by it all because um, I'm not a scientist. I don't have a Ph.D., um, but I have to say that I have championed environmental betterment and issues uh, really since the late 70s. And um, one of the things that I have done and seem to do is put a spotlight on critical social and environmental issues that aren't currently in public conversation and uh, bring awareness around those issues through innovative programming. Uh, One of the areas, topic areas, that I did a number of years ago, it's a four-year initiative, which was on um, aging and ageism. And uh, so we finished that and took several years off, and, and it occurred to me that oysters was was a, such a topic that fulfilled that, um, that intention. Do you find that, do you find that uh, people are not as aware of some of the issues that we're talking about, that th- there is still a large education curve to let the general public know about what you believe is the importance of this? Absolutely, Matt. Absolutely. Um, and w- when I first took the uh, the initiative on, this was uh, actually in late 2011, very beginning of 2012, uh, I started doing some small focus groups, um, young people, old people, people um, in the, that one might think would have some level of awareness. And I was shocked to know or to find out that that. Ninety-nine percent of the people were not aware that such a thing as even an oyster reef exists, and were quite aware of the coral reef system, um, warm water coral reef system, of which approximately fifty-five percent of them are gone. But eighty-five to ninety percent of the oyster reefs worldwide are gone. So it is, in fact, uh, the most endangered habitat worldwide. And so, why don't we know about this? You know, and it, it's so we really need that education and awareness building in the general public because of what the oysters do. What has happened to the reef systems? Is it natural, man-made? What's been, what has happened to destroy so many of them? Well, um, some is natural die-off. Our footprint, pollution, um, dredging, uh, all of those factors have contributed in a conversation we were having before we started our, our interview, I heard you say something that I found very interesting, and that uh, scientists and that the, the studies have been done that if not for the loss of a lot of these reefs, uh, the, some of the damage from Sandy down in the New Jersey area may not have been as bad. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that, if you would. Well, yeah, in 2012, you know, Paul Greenberg in the New York Times uh, wrote about that to and stated that uh, and that's true I mean the, the the oyster reefs you know create they have this ability to cement to one another you know they like to be connected and they just continue to build these reefs and and as a result uh, they are an amazing buffer uh, against storm surge and they as a result, are able to keep pace with sea level rise where man-made structures are not able to perform that function. And so they they really are instrumental in creating the whole... um, you know, coastline um, e- ecosystem. So what's interesting, if if they had not had such a loss of those reefs, some of the wave action may have been muted a little bit then that that, that struck portions like New Jersey then. Yes. That, that's the concept, right? Yes. And that makes sense. I, I remember hearing a similar story once uh, during a, a visit to Florida that uh, there are these amazing coral reefs that are off the Keys that actually help protect the Keys from a lot of the damage and why the Keys doesn't tend to get as much damage from hurricanes because these coral reefs actually you have almost a protective barrier uh, for those areas. It's exactly the same system and function. Absolutely, Matt. Mm -hmm. Is there a way, do scientists know any way to rebuild all of those reefs? You said, what was it, 80-something percent? 85. Is there any known way right now in science, you know, man-made or or natural, to start to rebuild those reefs? Is that possible? Is that a thought? Yes. Yes, it is. And that's one of the uh, topic strands that will be explored in depth, really, at, um, at the Oyster Symposium.
If you're just joining me today on the Sunday Journal, welcome in. We have Karen Dowsett with us. She is with the 6th Annual International Oyster Symposium. Karen is the program architect and also the North and South American chapter director of the World Oyster Society. Talk to me a little bit about the society. I'm so obviously involved with this symposium, but what other type of work is the World Oyster Symposium involved in? Oh, well, the it originally yeah, yeah. <laughs> World Oyster Society. Yes. What other work are they involved in? Yeah, well, um, the society is based in Japan, and uh, and primarily they have put together this symposium that they hold every other year. Um, but now that the oyster renaissance is really taking. Um, it's taking flight, hold around the country, know, yeah, around the yeah, world, around the world, yeah. the world actually. Um, so we're we're having meetings and discussing how best we can serve, you know, the oyster community around the world. So there's obviously a big international component to what's going to be coming up here on Cape Cod as well, I understand, right? I mean, we were saying in our pre-talk before our interview that you have uh, folks from Japan, even chefs coming from around the world as well, I understand. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. tell us about that. We have people coming from six continents and 19 states across the U.S., What's a total number? What's your? What do you at this point? What does it look like? Total number of people who are taking part in this? Oh gosh, a, it's a lot. lot. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Now uh, I'm looking at your uh, press material from your announcement of the symposium. And it says the purpose is threefold, to advance the industry's use of oysters as human food, to utilize oysters in improving water quality, restoring biodiversity, and then to improve public knowledge of oysters and empower communities about their benefits. So I want to kind of take a look at each of these. First of all, uh, here on the Cape, I think especially, to advance the the oyster as a use of human food. It's very important to us here in the Cape because we have this developing and burgeoning aquaculture industry here on Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. So for the Cape specifically, I think it's it's an environment story. Number one, I want to talk about that, but an, but an economy story for the Cape as well, right? I mean, there's some economic growth we could probably see when it comes to the oyster. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, it is a growth industry for the, for the state of Massachusetts. There's mm-hmm. no doubt, you know, about It's a pretty that. clean industry, mm-hmm. too. <laughs> well, you know, when it comes I know, to- <laughs> I know. I mean, it, there's really nothing... There's no really bad aspect to the right. oyster. I mean, it's really quite remarkable the more you think about it and learn about it. Um, and, in fact, uh, the growing of oysters is a, is a reverse paradigm from what we, you know, continue to think about. And, you know, when I talk with people and they hear about how the oysters really need to be in the water, and then it's like, oh, well, I shouldn't eat them. You know, that's the that's an automatic mm-hmm. You know, response when the truth of it is the more oysters in the water, whether they're in the water in the wild or for oyster aquaculture, uh, the better the water, you know, and the greater the, you know, the greater the benefit. Let's talk a little bit more about that, because uh, as we were talking as well, there are several towns as as the Cape as a whole tries to deal with its uh, wastewater issues and nutrient issues and its embayments and its harbors. You know, there's been this move away over the past couple of years from just basically putting a pipe, a sewer pipe in every portion of the Cape you could and doing it that way to looking at more um, alternative and innovative ways to deal with our nitrogen issues and our water issues. And I know specifically, I've referred to this before, I know Mashpee is heavily involved in this and other towns are looking at the creation of the use of the oyster, if you will, as a way to deal with the cleanup of the nitrogen issue, a way to do it without having to put in big sewer systems. So uh, tell me, we don't have to get too scientific about it, but how does that actually work? What does the oyster do that it makes it uh, very effective in dealing with the nitrogen loading issue? Well, it just does what it does. <laughs> just filters? I mean, and does- it just filters. I yeah. mean, the oyster is a filter feeder, and it likes to feed on nitrogen. You know, it feeds on the natural things that are in, you know, in the water. Um, it, of course, will filter the not so good things in the water. And so that's why we have, you know, regulatory agencies to make sure that where the farms are located, uh, you know, the waters are safe, you know, so that the oysters are, you know, appropriate for human consumption. So there's no concern, you know, about that. And it is a highly regulated Mm -hmm. uh, aspect of, of industry. So uh, there are some uh, some other highlights I'd like to point out about the event. So you have a trade show and an education expo. That's going to be taking place on the 22nd and the 23rd. Then on the 22nd, this sounds like a lot of fun, uh, you have an oyster grand tasting at the Seacrest uh, Beach Hotel at 630. So um, tell me a little bit about that. What's that going to be about? Oh, you know, the 
grand tasting. It, well, we had well we had our first one last year because we just wanted to kind of you know get a little bit of a jump start on it but we have uh, we have chefs coming from all over the united states and and three coming from japan to create oyster dishes um, for the public and for the conference attendees and um, so we will be having cooked dishes and also uh, each cooked dish will be paired with its um, oyster um, raw counterpart so you'll be able to taste the particular marois of the oyster um, naked Mm -hmm. uh, and then in one of these you know scrumptious uh, cooked dishes so it's really you know it's going to be quite a gastronomic uh, extravaganza (laughs) now I know there's obviously a a, an educational component that I that I imagine the experts if you are going to be interested in is there as our listeners are out there right now and reading as well uh, is there a component uh, for the public that they might be able to get involved with with the symposium still is that still a potential yes tell us about that Um, yeah, I think that the, I think that the symposium uh, is set up there. You know, of course, there's you know a, a number of you know a lot of technical sessions, but there, if if one looks at the overall um, program on the website, you can see that there's interactive roundtables on topics that are highly relevant to all of us because, for example, our water quality here on the Cape. I mean, so many of us depend upon a tourism industry and we need safe waters. You know, we we need the safe waters for uh, supporting our, you know, our our, our fishing, right, you know, way industry of life, it's sure, a, in our yeah. in our way of life. So there's many aspects that involve us that affect us, even directly and mm-hmm. indirectly. So people could actually, there are some things, uh, portions of this that people might be interested in attending. So yes. they can get a lot more information at oystersymposium.org, correct? Is correct. Is that uh, right? right? Mm-hmm. And in terms of the uh, grand oyster tasting, which you described excellent, uh, in an excellent manner, it makes me very hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, is it available? Is that still available for people to consider yes. going to? Yes, yes, and yes. so same situation would be oystersymposium.org. And you know what, Matt? Yes, I have me. to tell you. Go ahead. We even are going to be offering oysters from New Zealand. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. And do you think yes. those of us who eat a lot of them here, will we notice the difference? There's a little bit of a I, taste yeah, to it? I, yes, yeah. I, I believe so. So they're being I flown so. in from New Zealand? They are being flown in from New Zealand. Wow, so this is very, very, very special. And so we're we're really expecting to sell out so you know people should get their tickets all right sounds yeah. good well carl we're out of time we're going to be talking more about this as we get closer to it but i'd like to thank you for coming by this morning to talk about the sixth annual international oyster symposium for the first time being held in north america and we get it right here on cape cod well and i also have to just tell you one other thing sure. we have um you you do know paula poundstone oh yes paula poundstone's coming right very famous comedian yes she's coming and performing at the lily auditorium Wednesday evening okay. um, for everyone, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's going to be an evening of comedy and oyster edutainment. Right. <laughs> and, more and so inf- Paul is getting up to speed on the whole on oyster. oyster bit. Sounds you know? good. And that's uh, more information at oystersymposium.org. Karin, thanks so much for coming in today. We will see you uh, at the event coming up on the uh, October 21st through the 23rd. Thanks mm-hmm. so much for being here today. Oh, thank you, Matt. Appreciate Pleasure. It. Thank you. You're listening to the Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.